Hey guys! So I thought I'd actually try something new today and actually um, play through a whole actual match and uh, without doing the music or anything. So I apologize if I'm really boring or whatever, but yeah. Um, I haven't really done this before. Well, I've done it a couple times, but I'm. I'm better at actually, when I'm talking about something, I'm better at not actually doing it, so whatever. I'm gonna have a quick playthrough this and um, try and explain the kind of strategy that I use. Anyway, so to begin with, just get started. Always use a ninja monkey. The idea here is to pretty much just, in, um, seeking a shuriken, definitely get that straight away. And you want to get blue jutsu as soon as possible. May as well use this guy, I guess. I don't usually use my portable dart monkey, but may as well. Hmm. So, yes, I just start with a ninja monkey. Um, this is easiest to do on forest tiles, on forest tiles because of the the um, bonus to ninjas. I can actually place it 4-2 straight away on the first round without doing anything. Yeah, this happens sometimes, it's just pineapples. Don't underestimate pineapples and road spikes, they are really amazing. I I use them very often. Like right now. <laughs> uh, it was a very bad start. I usually don't have to do anything like that in the first round. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter too much. So anyway, I really want to get my dis like one distractions not good until you get at least a three 3-1 ninja, but for my first one I usually get to 4-1 before getting distraction. And after that, um, this stage kind of depends on what tile I'm doing. If I'm doing a re oh, no matter what, gen oh, yeah, no matter what I'm doing, my next tower is a bomb, bomb shooter. Because that helps out with the leads a lot. So, um, well, Firstly, the thing you got to know about the ninja is that it can be very problematic about where you place it. You have to be careful. Like, for example, if I placed my ninja if here, say that was a ninja, then if I had this ninja here, then my like balloon's tongue if I was here. If he was trying to attack a balloon that was here, then he would attack that direction. But because of the seeking shurikens, his shurikens would go backwards and attack balloons hitting here. So if I wanted to place him in this area, then I would have to place him on this side. You have to be very careful with your placement of ninjas like that, because it will screw you over a lot. A lot. So anyway, this is a regular tile. If it was a regen tile, then I would go straight to cluster bombs and just leave them at 3-0, but it is not a regen tile, so I'm going to go straight for a mob mauler, because that way um, if, yeah, if I use cluster bombs straight away, then it's it helps me out against the regions quite a lot. But when the mobs start coming, and they start coming round six, as you can see just there, when the mobs start coming, I have to use a lot more spikes, road spikes. It's not so much of a big deal on this map because honestly, this is one of the easiest maps in the game. As you can see, I didn't even have a mob mauler, and I still didn't leak to it. But yes. Once I get my second bomb tower up, whether it be a cluster bomb or a mob mauler, I then go for my second ninja, which I generally put just behind my first one. You can be a bit more lenient with your second one, like if, as I said before, if I had one here, then my second one, it wouldn't really matter if I put it over here, because the first one still covering those first balloons, and the second one's stopping some balloons from, like, stopping balloons from getting to the first one, so it still helps regardless. But it is always nice to pay careful attention to seeking shurikens because if you place your ninjas badly even if it looks like it is a good spot if you place your ninja badly for seeking shurikens then it will screw you over and it will do that a lot so you do have to be considerably careful about your seeking shurikens I've had that happen a lot really but yeah um. I'm pretty much in the clear once I've got three, these three towers up, honestly. 
I have my, I have the most difficulty within the first 15 rounds, but once I've got 4-2 here, 2-3 here, and 4-2 here, I'm generally in the clear, unless I get a rainbow regen rush, which is very painful. But I can, I can still get past them, depending on what map it is, and how I utilize my road spikes. Anyway, once I've got those three towers up, I go to my monkey village. And I just place that here. Just I always place it nearby my starting towers, but depend on the game that depends on the map. Um I think if like if you guys like this then I might do this for like all of the maps eventually. And just to show you how I generally how my strategy changes depending on the map. It doesn't really change that much, but it really depends, depends. <coughs> Once I got this guy up, I usually just leave it at zero zero. But on this map, this is a really easy map, so I don't need to get my next mob mauler up very quickly. So I, I don't mind getting it to one one. See so again, yeah. Depend. This is one thing that changes depending on the map. Very minor thing, but on easier maps, then you can go to one one straight away. But on harder maps, I generally leave this at zero and get a second mob mauler or uh, my first mob mauler. This is actually. Like on a forest, well, depending on a regen tile, this would be my first mauler, and this would be a cluster, cluster bomb. So, I can sell my dark monkey now. He's getting pretty useless, even though it was pretty much useless to begin with. I'm gonna go for another cluster bomb. Again, um, depending on the map, I change my targeting priorities of the cluster bombs. Since all the balloons coming in here then pretty much all of the blimps are going to be destroyed before they get to me so I just set all these on strong but on a map like if if this war only part wasn't here and the entrance was like here for example and it just came down and went straight like that around here I'd probably get this guy and like one here one here maybe uh, one maybe another one probably around here somewhere and I'd set them all to close because um, the issue then is that if they're all set to strong then they'll all target a Zoma God if it's coming over here, and a, and a BFP will get past, and then the mobs will just like fly straight past your defenses, which is not very nice. It doesn't matter if regular balloons fly past my defenses because I use Arctic Wind, and um, with a shard of Everfrost, Arctic Wind stops every balloon. The only thing that's going to get past you is blimps. Um, so anyway, uh, I usually go for about five mob maulers before doing this, but. I'll slow down a bit here. I was probably saved a bit too much cash then. Yeah, you, um, may as well go for five mob maulers, and then I get monkey intelligence bureau, and also jungle drums. Once you, I, I don't really know the, I haven't really like tested this or anything, but with a fifteen percent attack rate. I generally don't get jungle drums until I have five mob maulers, but or, or five towers in general, because that will add up to about another tower ish. At this point, I like once I got my monkey intelligence bureau. Never before then, doesn't matter. Never before I put the mon monkey intelligence bureau, and then once I finally get that monkey intelligence bureau, I place an ice tower. Because if you place it beforehand, your ninjas can't hit stuff that gets near here, and that is not nice. Because you like you like your ninjas with this distraction. That is a very big part of this, because it just it sends stuff back, so much stuff back. And this monkey intelligence bureau is also very good because it lets all of your bomb towers hit black balloons and zebra balloons, which increases. Because there there's a this game, unlike balloons tower defense five, this game focuses heavily on different types of loons to, to force you to use different types of towers. So in the end game there is a lot of lead balloons, a lot of zebra balloons, a lot of blacks, a lot of whites, all that stuff. There is lots of them to for, like try and trip you up and force you into different strategies. Which is very, very good. It like forces you to not focus on one tower. But anyway, once I yeah, once I get that monkey intelligence bureau up, I place his ice tower and then I get I get it to 2-1 straight away, and then I save up for Arctic Wind, 
Once, once I got that Arctic Wind, I get Deep Freeze. May as well, since it's just a really cheap upgrade. And once you've got this Arctic Wind up, you're not going to leak 20 balloons. Because I, I have a Shard of Everfrost, which is the special item you get from Glacier. The Glacier special um, mission. And that pretty much lets you permafreeze. And permafreeze with a 2-1 tower. 2-1 ice tower. A 1-1 ice tower, even. You can permafreeze with that. So in Arctic Wind, nothing will ever get past. <laughs> because the only things that can get past the 2-1 ice tower are like pink and yellow balloons because they're just so fast. But Arctic Wind slows them down to the point where they get caught by the 2. Um, at this point, I used to just mass mob maulers, but the problem then was that I just started lagging so much. So at this point, you've pretty much won. I mean, this defense can probably win. As long as you get the well, if I mass mode more is to take out all the blimps, then I probably win. But um, the issue is that you get so much lag in the, like the last five rounds, and especially the last round, just round twenty-five to thirty, it it hurts. It is so laggy that it causes you pain. <laughs> so you really got to get clean up towers. The best clean up tower that I have tested so far is the Ray of Doom which is the dartling gun. They're 4-0 four, four, dartling gun, but honestly it is completely inviable for it because of its price and you're never gonna get it, so sadly I am i can't actually utilize that in my strategies. So, next best thing, I, which I've started doing recently, I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing this, is getting a sun god. Sun god is definitely a very good cleanup tower with its like widespread Another good option is also a Roper Monkey. You can get Roper Monkeys, they're also very good at cleanup. I personally prefer the Sun God though, even though it is a lot more expensive and people claim that it has more damage. Uh, it just seems to work better, in my opinion. <laughs> and I can afford it anyway, so who cares? So anyway, once I got this Sun God for the cleanup, which I should get in this round, even though I'm getting a lot less cash. <laughs> get my sun god up. May as well get range upgrade. Although honestly, probably not gonna use yeah, I'll get one range upgrade, no point getting the second one, because it can already get nothing like nothing's gonna really get past here. Some stuff might, but it won't get past here, so and because of the massive like size of the blimps when they enter, I can they're already within my range because of their size. So no need to get the next range upgrade. Depending on the map, you may choose to get the range upgrade, but there's no need to in this map, for the building in this spot at least. And after this point, another good cleanup tower to use is the Glaive Lord, but you have to be very careful when using it, because it is not. it, it, it can have terrible repercussions. <laughs> if you place a Glaive Lord in a good spot where it can wipe out all of the uh, balloons with its rotating glaives before attacking them, then that is great. You won't lag. It'll it'll it reduces lag incredibly given its cost. But if you place it in a spot where it can't destroy all of the balloons with the rotating glaives before it starts attacking them a lot, then you then um well that attack hits like ten thousand balloons and it just ricochets back and forth between 10,000 balloons and he can attack fairly fast so that's a lot of ricocheting going on in a very dense area and you can you just you have to you have to go through it to understand just how laggy that is I honestly hope that I'm honestly like half hoping that they nerf the glaive lord like they did ricochet like down from 10,000 to 40 to 40 pops just so it stops lagging like that because you don't get a glaive lord for that attack you get the glaive lord for the rotating glaives the powerful rotating glaives yeah, but it's a shame that we can't use that because of that lag for now but I don't know maybe in the future so question is what to get next I haven't really experimented too much at this point but one op one good option is a ring of fire ring of fires work quite well Another option a lot of people use is the Juggernaut, but I've used like 10 Juggernauts and they don't really clean up that fast. 
10 juggernauts all at once, they, they don't clean up fast, so, <laughs> nah. You, um, I've considered using a sniper monkey, but the rounds are just so dense that I don't think sniper monkeys are really worth it at all. So, you can use pop and or something like that if you're on a lake map, maybe a buccaneer, but I think the best option is just a spike factory at the moment. Not really, sh it doesn't really matter which one, just a spike factory. Getting the mob shredders is quite good. And, um, depending on where you put your spike factory, you can get Whitehawk spikes or ignore it. I have a Sun God here, which is attacking dead this way quite a lot, and pretty much stripping, and like all these guys as well, and pretty much stripping everything. And also, I have my Monkey Intelligence Bureau, which I believe gives it pretty much Whitehawk spikes anyway, so I do not need to get that upgrade. That's a waste of 800 cash. Instead, I could get Spike Storm. I'm not going to though. If you're on a DDT tile, then Spike Storm can be very nice. Not not on this map particularly, because I mean, I'm gonna smash DDTs easily, even without that. But like on a short map, you pop that Spike Storm, just it just throws spikes all over the map. And since the DDTs move so fast, they go through so many spikes, and they just destroy themselves. So yeah, Spike Storm is very nice to use against DDTs. I went through a strategy um, where I used two spike storms to, but you don't really need, really, only really need one because what happens? The good thing about that is that DDTs come midway through the round, like or near the beginning, so you've got plenty of time to prepare for them. And I finished that with before finishing what I was going to talk about. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's pretty much it for that easy tile there. I mean, if you guys enjoyed this, then I might think about doing more stuff like this in the future, but yeah. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you around.